Hi everyone, the topic of today's video is not entirely original. Uh, if you're watching this channel, odds are you're familiar with uh, the Chieftain's video on American Tank Destroyers. And since there's quite a lot of uh, inf uh, misinformation out there dealing with Soviet tank destroyers, I thought uh, I would address this as well. Um, the topic is made complicated by the fact that uh, the USSR had no uniform tank destroyer corps or tank destroyer doctrine, and so any branch of the armed forces could freely refer to something um, as Istribisil Tankov or Tank Destroyer. Uh, in English language sources, this is made more complicated by the fact that the word Istribisil has multiple meanings. Uh, some are as far away from tanks as uh, fighter aircraft. Uh, so Istribisil Navia Polk, for example, would refer to a fighter aircraft regiment. Uh, but let's get started. So uh, I'm going to show you four images, and uh, here's a quick uh, have a quick guess as to which of these are tank destroyers. Now, as you may have guessed from the title of this video, uh, the first image does indeed depict a tank destroyer. Uh, the term tank destroyer is applied to uh, troops or groups of troops uh, whose primary purpose in combat is to destroy tanks. Uh, I've seen the earliest I've seen this term used was in a 1935 infantry manual where troops were instructed to hide in foxholes or slit trenches uh, and destroy tanks by throwing grenades, uh, either purpose made anti tank grenades uh, or grenade bundles. Um, to destroy the tanks, uh, the tracks of the tank, uh, or throw them on the engine deck of the tank as it passes. Um, the maneuver, I'm sure many of you have seen the uh, uh, photograph of troops in a uh, slit trench with the T-34 going over them. Um, it's referred to as uh, apkatka. It's not that easy to translate, but basically uh, rolling over, ironing over is usually how it's translated. The idea is that these soldiers uh, should be used to the fact that a tank driving over them uh, can't harm them as long as they're in the trench, so they can uh, let it approach and destroy its tracks or engine or uh, other components of the tank with grenades. Another weapon of these tank destroyers was the so-called Molotov cocktail. Now, interestingly enough, Molotov cocktail is a term invented by Finland in uh, during the Winter War, uh, but the Red Army, or rather unofficial Red Army troops, were facing... Um, what was later came to be known as Molotov Cocktails during the Spanish Civil War. So even during the Spanish Civil War, we got reports of uh, enemy troops using what was called Zajagatilne Butilki, or um, incendiary bottles. So this is a uh, glass bottle filled with some kind of flammable fluid. You light something on fire, you usually a fuse of some kind, or the cork, you throw it at a tank, the tank catches fire. Uh, these were described as in 1936-1937. Uh, the Red Army actually doesn't really use this kind of weapon at the time. Uh, the earliest I've seen this kind of weapon referred to is during the Great Patriotic War. Uh, on my website I have instructions detailing um, the different kinds of Molotov cocktails and uh, again the proper term is not Molotov cocktail but I'll just use that term because it's, uh, it's more familiar to my viewers. So if you've played a video game uh, that has Molotov cocktails in it, or uh, you probably saw them in, in movies or on TV at some point, uh, the stereotype is you have a, a bottle with a rag shoved into it, uh, and you light the rag, you throw it at the enemy tank, or whatever target. Uh, this was actually not the case for the uh, Red Army Molotov cocktails. Uh, they came in multiple different styles. Uh, for one of them, it was called the KS Fluid. Uh, KS Fluid actually ignited on its own um, on contact with air. So all you had to do is throw this kind of bottle and uh, as soon as it breaks, it would catch fire. Um, there were other mixtures. So there was the number one mixture and number three mixture. These mixtures did in fact need some kind of uh, external source of flame. So uh, if you were lucky, the then your uh, Molotov cocktail would be equipped with a uh, metallic flint that would actually ignite um, when it hits a solid object, or a, a little file uh, that would uh, also ignite when, when broken, much like the KS fluid, and ignite the rest of the bottle. Uh, 
Uh, if you weren't lucky, you had to light it by hand, so there would actually be a special match attached to the side of the bottle that you would uh, light like any other match and then throw the cocktail. The tactics used by uh, these Molotov cocktail troops were similar to grenades. Uh, you would hide somewhere. Uh, these instruction actors um, describe more natural terrain, so under a bridge, in a ditch, behind some trees. Uh, when you see enemy tank approach, you would throw... Uh, throw your, your bottles at it, pretty straightforward. Uh, there are sort of more complicated tactics to go with this, so uh, a small, the smallest unit that the manual recommends you use is uh, between two and three men. Uh, in this case, one or two have uh, three bottles each. Uh, these bottles are th thrown at uh, you know, enemy tanks. Uh, the third one, or the second one if you only have two. Uh, he's the commander, he's armed with a submachine gun or a machine gun, and his job is to kill the enemy troops as they escape the tank, because you know you tend to do that when your tank is on fire. Now, the, these groups of two or three men, of course, were just the most granular divisions of uh, infantry-based tank destroyers. Uh, you would normally have a group of five to seven people that would ambush a column of enemy tanks from multiple directions uh, somewhere where it would be difficult for them to maneuver. Uh, so the manual that comes with Molotov cocktails uh, suggests you should throw them um, when the tanks are on a bridge or in a tight village where they can't really maneuver uh, or some similar location where you could immobilize more than one tank and sort of uh, paralyze the rest of them. So as the war progressed, the Red Army received more and more powerful uh, thrown anti-tank weapons. So at the beginning, uh, you would start with just a bundle of five grenades held together with wire uh, or the purpose-made um, RPG-40. In this case, the RPG is not a rocket-propelled grenade, it is a hand-thrown grenade. Uh, you got then the RPG-41, which is similar to RPG-40, just a big old chunk of explosive, you know, you throw it at a tank, you hope the shockwave knocks out something important. Uh, in 1943, there was a little bit more advanced uh, heat grenade called RPG-43, actually stabilized in flight, you had a little parachute that uh, fell out the back, uh, the heat jet could punch through quite a bit more armor, so uh, you didn't have to just throw it at the tracks anymore and, and hope the tank was immobilized. Uh, but the tactics for these remain more or less the same. You hide in some kind of small trench or concealment, you wait for a tank to get close, you throw your uh, throw your grenade at the tank, and then hope, you know the rest of your squad uh, attacks the survivors and destroys them. Uh, these tactics obviously only work if the enemy tanks are not covered by infantry, uh, but that was a whole separate section of the manual, and this video only uh, only has to do with tank destroyers. So that's it for part one. Uh, in the upcoming videos, I'm going to cover the other tank destroyer methods used by the Red Army that I've shown you previously.